OI Stars. It's 504. Welcome to Living in the Light. I have to tell you, I I don't know where those four minutes went. Maybe I was abducted by an alien or something, you know, gone and back. Anyway, I'm here a couple minutes late, and I guess I've got pretty good excuses for being late. Uh, tardy, as my teachers used to say. I was, um, I've been doing some lightening up. Now, those of you who watch regularly know that I do a lot of, uh, <clears throat> I talk about letting go of stuff, lightening up, you know, minimalizing, and, you know, you really have to know where to draw the line. Uh, when you, you don't want to go too far, uh, that's called, um, uh, minimalizing regret. I don't have a lot of that, but I do find I still get stuck. So we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit today because we want to look at, at all the ways we do want to live in the light. We want to be feeling light, happy, free, and uh, so that's what we're going to look at today, but I wanted to make sure I did the National Day Calendar. I love to start that way to kind of get, uh, oopsie, hang on a minute, my computer thought I wanted to end the video, and I don't, so I'm going to say cancel. That was freaky. All right, <clears throat> so anyway, today on the National Day Calendar... It is National Men Make Dinner Day. Well, for those of you with a man in your life, you go, girl. Men, and they had some little, let me see if I can find it on the National Day calendar. They had some rules that the men were to abide by. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to look it up. And let's see. Okay, on National Men Make Dinner Day, um, some men like to cook, not all do, so for those that don't, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but it was created for the men who do not know their way around the kitchen and are not familiar with cooking appliances as well as for the women in their lives. So there are rules that must be followed on Men Make Dinner Day. The main meal must include a minimum of four ingredients and at least one cooking utensil other than a fork. The man does the shopping for all the necessary ingredients. He's got to clean up as he goes. You don't, it doesn't help if he makes the dinner and you got to clean up. That doesn't work. And aprons are optional. There is a complete set of rules on... Uh, <clears throat> the National Men Make Dinner website. They even have their own website. Is that hilarious or what? Now, I want to talk about that apron for a minute because I always try to wear an apron when I'm cooking. I try to wear an apron and I'll put a little bandana on my head because, especially for cooking for somebody else, you don't want any hair in your food, you know? And uh, I know that you may not realize it, but uh, our buddy uh, Tish is right here. I think she's mad at me. As you can see, she's got kind of a scowl because I was giving her a hard time when I was trying to get ready because she was all over me. But you know what? She loves me unconditionally. So I know that even if she may be scowling, that uh, she's happy to be back on my lap. So, but when you're cuddling your cat like this, guess what? You get hair, fur that winds up in your food. So if you got a pet, and of course we remember that um, <clears throat> aprons also keep our clothes clean. Okay? So it's about keeping our clothes clean and keeping our food clean. So I would not say an apron is optional. You know what? Something happened. I lost my list. <laughs> I lost my list. I can't do this without my list. Hang on a minute. Was Tishy sitting on it? 
Oh my goodness, this is not amusing. Well, oh, there it is. Just fell on the floor. Okay, it is also Chicken Lady Day. And the Chicken Lady was a woman named Dar Dr. Uh, Mathianus Tina Dupree. She worked at the largest uh, chicken restaurant in the world, for the largest chicken restaurant in the world, and was director of community relations and provided training and education for people to get better jobs. And she interacted with the community and was constantly uh, helping others. And so it's National Chicken Lady Day. Maybe your husband or your mate, man in your life can make chicken for dinner. Speaking of which, there's no man in my life. What am I going to do about dinner, you know? I think I just may treat myself and order out. Yes, and then I will have a man make my dinner. Ah, I don't know. I don't care. I'm still there with a man. A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. They're a nice enhancement to our lives, but they're not a requirement. Okay. It is National Cash Back Day. Now, this has got so much potential. And there's a, a website. It's cashbackday.com. And you can learn about the many ways that you can prosper by getting your cash back. That happens in a number of ways. First of all, Susie Orman said, don't ever spend your change. So if, she's an amazing financial expert. So, and I've been practicing this since I first connected with her teaching. I, whenever I buy something, I get the change, it goes, you know, into a container or whatever. And when I get a goodly amount, then I swap that over to, uh, to green money. The reason I'm saying then you swap it over to green money or have it deposited in your account or something is because um, there's a coin shortage. And all these people were freaking out about the coin shortage. What's going on? Well, do you know why there's a coin shortage? It's because people are keeping their change. <laughs> so keep your change, but don't keep it too long. What, what about this? What if you were to open an account, uh, a savings account, and you only put your change in it? So let's say you'd save up for a month and then take all the change for the month and deposit it. What do you think you would have at the end of the year? I think that's a ponderable thought. So... That's cashbackday.com. And, oh, I wanted to add to that also, um, I have a credit card, and every time I use it, I get cash back. They just put it into a little account, and um, I don't want to spend it. I keep hanging on to it. And when I'm ready, and when I want to buy something, I can just buy it, and it'll never pinch me. It is um, National Candy Day. Well, I don't have to talk about that. Uh, of course, some of you may be tired of candy. If you've got kids and they brought home a lot of stuff for Halloween, they brought home too much stuff for Halloween, food banks do accept candy. So think of a way to give it to, to folks who would like it if you don't want to sit down and eat it all yourself, which can lead to its own problems. All right. Well, I want to talk now about lightening up and how we can live in the light in our home. Oh, and I got so many stories. I have to try to uh, do this in a timely manner. And this is one of those times you may want to uh, get something to write with because you may want to make a few notes. Have you felt that your house was at all cluttered? You know, clutter is actually depressing. Um, for one thing, it reminds us of stuff we have to do. I got to put that away. I got to finish that project. I got to do this. I got to do that. And we just get so tired of looking at it. 
And then, like, we don't want any company coming over to our house or anything because uh, we're kind of embarrassed or we'd have to clean the clutter and don't think we'd have the time to do it. And there's another really important part of this. I, uh, it, during the summer, I work, you know, like, I will work from 8 to 14 hours in a day and uh, seven days a week. And I love it. If everyone could feel that good about their job, we'd all be looking good. But um, anyway, uh, so what happens is around the house, it gets a little cluttered because I'll run in, you know, after I leave the office. I'm not, I'm not working in the office all those hours at night. I come home, I fix myself supper, and then I go out and I uh, read my campfire stories to campers. And it's something I do because I love it. I, you know, like some campers want to give me money for it. And I go, oh, no, 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 no. I'm doing this for love. Doing this just because I want to give you a gift. And, uh, and they like that. So, but by the time I come home, it's 10 o'clock. And about that time, I am done. I am exhausted. So the clutter doesn't get picked up. And what happens is as that happens, I start to feel like, I don't know, claustrophobic, not that I have that much. That's why I work very hard at letting go of stuff. Now, you may recall I did the 30-day challenge last year. Day one, you give away one thing. Day two, you give away two things. I know a lot of you have heard this, and you might have heard me say it just the other day. But it is worth repeating. You know, I mean, a lot of times we don't. we love to watch reruns. How many times have you watched Overboard? Seriously, <laughs> probably a lot. And um, but the the thing with the clutter is is it's depressing. We don't feel comfortable having company. Uh, it drags us down. It weighs us down. Sometimes it blocks the windows and it gets a little dark. Or we keep the curtains closed just in case someone might peek through our window and see our clutter. What happens then? Again. You're in the dark. So, so I have been uh, watching some uh, decluttering videos and minimalist videos, which I've, I've really been enjoying. And, and again, I'll hear the same thing two or three times. And, oh, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's right. And uh, some of them I have really caught right from the beginning. So I listened to one today by a woman. Tell me I wrote down her name. Oh, fooey. Oh, fooey. I put it somewhere. A Diana K. White, I believe is her name. And she does books and videos about keeping your house clean, organized, and free of clutter. And, you know, unless you get rid of it, you're not really free of it. And I have been growing in this. And today, I'm going to be making a big step. And I wanted to kind of share it with you because this is not going to be an easy one. Um, but before I get there, I want to tell you a funny story about this little girl here. She has not used her cat tree hardly ever in the past couple years. It's just like, eh, you know, she just didn't use it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to declutter. I'm going to get rid of that. And so I thought about it for a couple of days. I could have just put it out by the side of the road, but it's, it, was, it cost me a little bit. And uh, I had to try to figure out, did I want to put it by the side of the road and, you know, might get rained on or something before somebody picked it. Well, then I figured maybe I would ask you guys online, anybody looking for a cat tree? It's an pretty good shape, you know, and uh, so then I'm thinking about that the other day, and I'm cleaning out a cabinet. I turned around. Guess who's sitting on the top of her cat tree? Miss Tish. And she's been in it several times for the past few days, so don't let, you know, don't believe cats don't read minds. They read your mind, like if you start thinking about getting out the carrier to take them to the vet or anywhere in the car. They know, and they disappear. 
So, uh, but I thought that was a hilarious story. And then I want to talk about a story about uh, holding a thought in your mind and having it manifest. And even discussing it a little bit. As I'm decluttering my house, and it's going to be winter now, and I'm a writer, I write. And in the winter, I want to write. However, my desk, which I love my desk, it's a cute little, you know, you can close the doors, but I don't like to go there a lot during the day because it is in the darkest corner of my room. Even when you put the lights on, and there was nothing I could do that made me feel really comfortable, you know, just going to sit at my desk and work. I wanted a little bit of light around me. And I was talking to Laura the other day about, you know, I wish we could move the furniture around or do something to get my desk in a better place. I talked to my sister about it. I said, you know, there's just no place else to put it. And we, we looked around and we thought, and, you know, there really isn't any place else to put it. So then my sister, was Valerie, was telling me that she was uh, going to be um, just getting rid of some furniture. She was going to put it by the side of the road. By the way, very nice TV stand and large coffee table are out there on the road at uh, 89 North Moodus Road right as we speak. So if you're looking for something that needs a little TLC, but, <clears throat> excuse me, really good heavy furniture. So... I was trying to figure out how to solve this problem. And in the meantime, I was giving away stuff. Give it went to Goodwill a couple weeks ago. So I'm in the flow of circulation. I gave away Tristan's easel, which just like, because we played on that so much. But he kind of lost his fascination with it. So there went the easel. But I put it on the side of the road for free and somebody picked it up. And I'm sure they're very happy. And so I go to get the, I had to run to the store and pick up some things yesterday. And I go down by the street and there my sister has put this little, it's like a little vanity table with a little open space underneath it. That is my new writing area. Not my desk per se. My desk has got my printer and my paper and all my stuff. But I now have a little writing area. I picked it up. I was on my way out, had the car, so I picked it up and put it in the car. It's, it's still there. Uh, but I have to get rid of some more stuff before I can let it go. So, see, minimalizing is not just about losing stuff, letting go of stuff. It's having less stuff, but more stuff that you really want. Every time I think about all the people that have all the the storage units and, you know, I like to watch, um, what is the name of that show? Storage Wars? Because you uh, see the people go into these places where people put the stuff in and then stop paying the rent. And there's some pretty good stuff in there. And makes you want to get into that business. No. <laughs> But there are, and I think about all the stuff people have that's sitting there really wasting away because things are in a constant state of deterioration, especially if they're not cared for. And somebody that really, really needs it could use it. And so that's why I want to let go of stuff so that people who really want it and need it can use it. And it's not cluttering up my house and dragging me down. So... The woman who did the video that uh, I watched today, there's one of them is called Minimalist Mom. I like her. And with this one, I think it's Diane K. White. Um, she started off by saying, when you're going to declutter, and she was talking in this particular case about a, like, you know that place in your kitchen or on the shelves, you know, that you walk by all the time until it, what we call, becomes a part of the landscape. And you don't see it anymore, but other people do. And if I haven't shared the story with you about my, my little plant that became part of the landscape, I had an inch plant once, and I put it in my dining room. I hung it 
from the ceiling. And oh, somewhere over time, it died. Probably wasn't getting watered. I used to call myself Plank Kevorkian. <laughs> and uh, so I um, didn't think about it much. And one day my sister Valerie came over and she goes, when are you going to take down that dead plant? I looked and said, oh, yeah. And I took it down and got rid of it. it. I don't know why it was there so long and I just forgot it. But if you ever want to give me a plant, don't. Please don't. I beg you, don't ever give me a plant, okay? The only plants I do are like in the garden when I plant stuff that you can eat, which I can't do here because I can't have a garden, but I did grow basil this year and I used a lot of it. So, okay. So, Diana K, Diana, what, the, the decluttering expert, said that um, what you, you need two things, that you need a bag, a trash bag, and you need a box that says donate. And those are the only two things you need. Well, I, yeah, okay, all right, thank you. Um, I just realized, a little birdie in my ear, um, that she's right. You only need the two bags because one of the things I do when I'm decluttering is I've got a thing that says file, which means it has to be put away. But she said, eh, 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 eh. no. Trash and donate. If you pick something and it has to be filed or put somewhere, put it away right then. Right then. Don't stop because you know what you wind up with? I know this to be true because I do it all the time. You wind up with a stack of papers or, you know, and then you got other stuff buried in there. And uh, no, so so don't do that. Um, okay, so she has... Uh, this, this is like, you know, minimalizing or on steroids, she, she goes right through. So every time you pick something up, you say, does this have a place in my house? Am I using it? Do I? And she said, don't ask why, because if you ask why, that's an excuse to find a reason not to let it go. Mm. One of the other clues I got from a different minimalist said, can you replace this? in 20 minutes with $20. That definitely has to go. Speaking of which, I gave away today uh, a beautiful top hat that I bought for Girls Weekend two years ago when we were doing Enchanted, which had witches and stuff. And so I had this wicked witch nose. Don't know whatever happened to that. And I had a top hat. And I hung on to that top hat, and I hung on to it, because I kind of like it. But the thing is, I have a rather small head. It's smaller than the average person. So when I put on a hat, it goes, boom. And even though this hat had one of those little elastic things that kept it from coming all the way down, it really didn't fit. But I love the hat so much, and I hung on to it, and I hung on to it. And today, I put it on my head. I walked over to my sister's house for our Mahjong afternoon, and I said, hey, would you like this top hat? She went in the other room, she tried it on, she said, oh, yes. So not only is it not cluttering my house anymore, she really likes it. I know that girl's going to wear that hat, and, uh, <clears throat> and she has a place to put it, which I don't. She's doing her own minimalizing, which I think I mentioned yesterday, which I am working on now. Oh, I got so much to go through today, so I'm going to still try to hurry up. <clears throat> I want to talk about the lost and found. As you are going through your stuff and your clutter, there are so many funny stories about things you think you lost, but then you found. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. I'm getting a little... <clears throat> A little frog in my throat from talking so much. Lovely cranberry juice today. Um, you know, I like cranberry juice, and I wonder why I don't drink it more, but that's what I'm having. It's a part of minimalizing. 
well, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Anyway, um, okay, so we have to figure out how we're going to let go of stuff that has a an emotional, we have an emotional or sentimental attachment to it. I am extremely sentimental, and I want to have it to hold in my hand. So I have a lot of stuff that, you know, I, I've talked to you about them before, and, like, my kids will probably look at the stuff when I leave the planet and go, what the heck was she saving this stuff for? But it was special to me. So that doesn't mean you have to let go of everything, but you do have to let go of stuff. So today I wanted to have you with me in in support as I let go of some things that really have to go. And you probably know that I talked to Tristan on the portal, which is the Facebook thing I was talking to you about the other day. It's a screen and and the camera scans so you can walk around the room and it follows you and everything. So we've been playing with the portal for like four years. <clears throat> Maybe three years I think I've had it. But one of the things we do is we do crafts. Well, this happens to be a craft, one of the first crafts we did. It's a toilet paper craft and uh, it's binoculars. <laughs> So I'd call him on the portal and I'd go, wait a minute, I got to see you, I can't see you. And we had all kinds of adventures with it, but he doesn't care anymore and it's only taken up space in my house. However, before you let go of something, if you don't have a picture, you will probably want to have a picture. I happen to have a picture of, like, Tristan looking with his binoculars as I was looking at mine, with mine. Okay, and then we have, uh, this is one of the three bears, which is missing an ear. Probably got into some kind of a brawl in the toy box, I don't know. But now that Tristan has outgrown the toilet paper toys, uh, <clears throat> it's got to go. This is... This is a shark. <laughs> and one day, uh, we, we used to play for hours going, you know, do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do. and then we'd have, we'd have one of his toys catch the shark, and then we'd figure out how we were going to cook it for dinner, and, you know, so those are things that have, they pull on my heartstrings, but whatever you have that pulls on your heartstrings, you can let it go. Now, this is a biggie, biggie. I've shared this with you in the past. And it is my kudos and cards. I know all of us have those days when we feel like, you know, we're a loser, nothing matters, we're, we haven't done anything worthy of note and nobody cares, and... That if you don't ever have those days, well, good for you, I do. Um, not very often, I will say, but when I do, or when I feel alone and lonely, I will go in my little thing. Oh. Mm. Well, okay, this has got to go. Oh, I don't know. Why is the first thing I picked up something so difficult? It's a card that Tristan made for me with a little poem, and it's about this pillow. And it says, this pillow is filled with hugs from me. Whenever you need a hug, just squeeze it tight, and I'll be hugging you right back. Love, Tristan. I can't keep all this good stuff, so it's going to get a picture with the card, and I keep the pillow, because it's full of hugs from my boy, and I'm going to let the card go. All right, what else do we have? Okay, today is a day to be thankful for life's blessings. And this is from my daughter. As well, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. You'll be in my heart. Missing you awful, all my love, 
Panini. Well, this year, uh, we're going to be on the portal doing our Thanksgiving together. So I am going to bless and release the card. So you can see why for a very sentimental person, this is a tough thing to do. Well, I'm going to get back to my decluttering. I'm sure I'll have more stories for you about that. Tomorrow is going to be the Friday. It's going to be the last day of the week that we're going to be doing our little uh, visit. And then I'll recover for the weekend and, and see you on Monday. But for now, I will see you tomorrow. And until then, God bless you good. And thank you so much for being with me today. Bye-bye from me and Tish.